السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم my dear friends before we begin today's session I would like you to do two things for me one is recite a very very loud salawat okay because I can hear you from all the way here so let's recite a loud salawat the loudest loudest salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad and another thing I want you to do is recite a small surah from the Quran for me. Okay? And I know you all know Surah Ikhlas. So let's recite Surah Ikhlas together. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan illayni rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. Sadaqallahu al-aliyu al-azim. So, it is a month of Muharram, 1442, okay? It's a whole new Islamic year for all of us. But for some of us, it's a little different this year because we have to stay home due to the coronavirus, okay? And that's okay because guess what we get to do? We get to make our homes into Husseiniyas. Whether we go to the mosque and listen to Majalis, or we stay at home. We can always make our homes into Husseiniyas. But how do we do that? So, let me tell you. Go around your house, pick a favorite corner you have, or the best spot that you have in your house, okay? You can put a black banner there, you can put flags, you can write on the flags, or decorate your flags on your own by writing Ya Hussein on it, Ya Zainab on it, Ya Abbas on it. And make sure you put that in your corner because that can be your Muharram corner. And when we make our homes into Husseiniyas, guess what? Who visits us? Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra comes to visit us. Yes, she comes to our homes. Can you imagine how awesome that can be? Oh my goodness, she visits our homes. So make sure your Muharram corner is the best, best, bestest of the corners. Okay? There are a few things that happen in the month of Muharram. But um, uh, apart from the tragedy of Karbala, and I would like to mention a few of them. Prophet Zakaria, once in the month of Muharram, asked Allah to fulfill his desire okay and he asked Allah to bless him with a son now we all know prophet Zakaria was very very old he was about 75 years old when he asked Allah to bless him with a son and guess what Allah fulfilled his hajat okay he was blessed with a son at the age of 75 years old because Allah in the Quran has mentioned that whoever asks me in the month of Muharram, I will make the impossible possible. So what does that tell us? That we have to pray so hard in the month of Muharram. Okay, take your little hands, make dua, okay, take a paper and pen, write your lists down of what you want to ask Allah and pray really, really hard and make sure you ask Allah what you want, what blessings you want, what duas you want, what hajat you want and inshallah Allah will fulfill all your desires and your wishes and your blessings. Yeah, another important thing that happens in the month of Muharram is that we do azadari. Okay, we cry for Imam Hussein. When I was little, it was very, very hard. I found it really hard to cry. But I remember being told that even if you can't take the tear out of your eye, just feel sad. Pretend to be sad. Make your fa face into a sad face. Okay, because when you're crying or when you're becoming sad, you are crying over those who were bullied in Karbala. 
okay and that tells you that you will never ever ever bully anyone and make sure when you see somebody being bullied you help them okay another thing i would like to tell you is whenever you go to the majalis of imam hussein make sure you take a small handkerchief with you because if that one tear comes out that handkerchief of yours can become a soothing blanket for you it can become a comfort blanket whenever you are feeling sad or you're not um feeling happy or you're feeling angry or if you feel things are not going right you can take that blanket and just keep it by your heart and i am telling you that blanket will bring you comfort you know allah has said that even if that one tear that comes out for imam hussein if that tear went into jahannam it would put out the whole fire now imagine how strong that tear of imam hussein is how how much how precious the tear of imam hussein is that it can put out the whole jahannam fire yeah and um let me tell you another secret that i have whenever you if you want good deeds okay many many good deeds and you want to do something really small because you can't do something really big what you do is whenever you see a glass of water or whenever you see water anywhere just say assalamu alayka ya aba abdullah because that will give you so many so 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 many good deeds okay and i'm sure we all want good deeds very very fast so whenever you see water say assalamu alayka ya aba abdullah okay now today i would like to talk about one person who we all know and i'm sure most of us just love 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 him okay so i am going to talk about hazrat abbas okay and we all know hazrat abbas was the son of imam ali he was the brother of imam hussein and he was a very great warrior he was a very 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 strong warrior since he was little okay he wanted to fight so much in the battle of karbala but you know what he gave up this desire when imam hussein his imam of time told him not to fight okay even if he was the flag bearer okay he flag bearer is a person who is up front okay he leads the group he leads the army he did not question the imam's request hazrat abbas knew that following imam hussein meant following allah imagine your job is to set up the tents for your loved ones in the hot hot scorching sun your eyes gazes over the desert and sees a river naturally you decide to set up the tents there okay a few days pass and the imam of the time okay tells you tells you the enemies want you to move your tents by the from the river please help pack up the tents and move them el- elsewhere what would you do it doesn't make sense these are women they were children they were elderly in their tents they need the water to survive it's so hot your mind is telling you this doesn't make sense but the imam of the time is telling you do it how can you control the turmoil inside you now imagine it has been 3 days since your child your niece your sister your family had water you hear allah tash allah tash thirsty and you can't do anything to help them the imam of your time allows you to go get water for the children he is also your brother imagine the final embrace okay that final hug he gave you when you leave what thoughts must have gone through you hazrat abbas's mind okay what thoughts must have gone through imam hussein's heart or mind but knowing that he has to remain calm now imagine you remain you reach the water you haven't had anything to drink for days the heat is unbearable your lips are dry your mouth is even drier you put your hands in the cool refreshing water bringing it to your mouth but then you throw it back because sakina is thirsty because your sister zainab is thirsty because your imam the imam of the time is thirsty this was abbas 
Ibn Ali on the plains of Karbala. Hazrat Abbas was the son of Imam Ali and he was the beloved brother of Imam Hussein. He was a flag bearer in Imam Hussein's army. He was the one of the best examples only in the remembrance of Allah will the heart find peace. Okay, Allah reminds us in the Quran, when we remember him in our hearts, we will be happy and at peace. Let's try to make it a habit to keep Allah in our hearts and minds so that whenever, so we can be like Imam Hussein and Hazrat Abbas and that no matter what happens in the land of Karbala, they were always at peace with Allah's will. Yeah, now at the end, I would like to show you an activity that we did at home, okay, which always makes us feel that we should be calm and remain peaceful, okay. So we took a bottle, just an empty bottle, you can fill it up with water. We printed out an ayah which says, only in the remembrance to Allah, okay, will your heart find peace. Okay, only in the remembrance of Allah, your heart will find peace. So you laminate this or you can put tape on it. You can put it inside the bottle. Okay. You fill the water bottle up. And then we took a few glitters. Okay, and a few shapes, uh, some objects, sequins. You can take glitter. You can take some more glitter and you can pour it all inside this um, bottle of yours. But before doing that, I want you to remember a few names of Allah. Say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Remember a few names of Allah and um, pour some water in here. Remember Assalamu Alaikum Ya Aba Abdullah and you can recite Al Wadud, which is Allah loves you. Okay, that is the meaning of Al Wadud, the loving. Imagine Allah is the loving. So you can recite Al Wadud, you can recite Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah, you can place the laminated um, paper in the jar. Okay, and then you can put a little bit of um, food coloring for color if you want. Fill it up with water, put in your hearts and your glitter and all the things that you have and close it really tight. You can put a little bit of um, hot glue just for the, um, t uh, the cap to stay really tight and then you can use it. Shake it up whenever you feel your emotions are going up on a roller coaster. Pick up your jar and remember how calm Imam Hussein and Hazrat Abbas were and then with the names of Allah ask Allah to help bring peace in your heart okay and make a silent promise to remain calm and live like Imam Hussein and Hazrat Abbas okay this is how your bottle will look like at the end and whenever you're feeling sad or unhappy or angry just look at this bottle and remember the patience of Hazrat Abbas and Imam Hussein the love of Allah that he has for you. We all have one at home. And whenever we're not um, happy or sad. And uh, we need to calm down a little bit. We look at these bottles. Allah, please remember me in your duas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.